Shot 137, all in the name of getting a very, very good data set. Oh, that felt unreal. This CB is something. So these are the brand new Apex 24 irons. We've got the Apex Pro, we've got the Apex CB, and of course we've got the Apex MB. Now today we're gonna to find out exactly how these heads differ in performance and ball flight, how they differ in forgiveness, how they differ in workability, and how they differ in sound and feel. Now you already know how we do it here, in-depth comparison on DC Quad. Let's do it. Very thin. I do you have a thin strike at the minute? But if that's my thin, especially, yeah, low toe, not great, especially seeing as that was the CB. So, yeah, the a not very forgiving club. That's pretty damn forgiving. So, we're starting off in the CB. So, really, a traditionally designed cavity back iron. Callaway are calling it your Tor Cavity Iron. Traditionally lofted at 34 degrees 7 iron that I've got here. And yeah, not loads of technology to help, really. Quite a small, compact head, which we'll touch on later, but not loads of tech, really. The face, body, one piece forged construction from 1025 carbon steel, five step forging process, which Callaway say give you that buttery soft feel. But apart from that, you've got one Minway out in the toe which again, Callaway is saying is perfectly balanced for control, workability, and that little bit added stability in a small player's design like this, a little bit more help than the blade, but again, not loads. And yeah, that's pretty much it really with the tech story. I mean, they've got flighted CG, which we've seen in other tech stories that kind of goes into the blade as well, flighted CG. So we know we're gonna get a little bit lower launch, a little bit more spin from the shorter irons and that little bit more launch from the longer irons. You know, we've, we've seen that before. Um, and other than that, we're kind of dynamic sole, which is actually really nice to be fair, which Callaway saying, you've got a little bit of a pre-worn leading edge and a little bit of trail edge relief as well. Just that quick in and out turf interaction, just yeah, to really, really help it get in and out the turf smoothly and nicely. But yeah, not, not tons on the tech front, just a nice traditional cavity back. So shaft wise, I just picked something randomly off the wall. We've got Mitsubishi MMT95 stiff standard length and ball we're playing something a bit different today, which is a left dash. Pro V1X. I just love a thin. So, so, basically the same as the last shot. But again, like, what a result. My left shoulder keeps cracking at the top of my backswing. Yep, like, identical strike. Again, quads reading the face way close, the same as it did. If you watch my last video, T150 versus T200, the T200 kept doing that. Don't know why, gonna have to contact Foresight. Wasn't that close, but again, that did not feel like a good strike. Same result, and it's 187, 192 total, 0.5 offline. That is, yeah, really good. It actually felt like a little bit of a better strike, in all fairness. Tiny bit higher up the face. Again, absolutely going to take it. Yep, still toey, but it was a little bit higher up the face. 10 mil low, it's, it's to be fair, it always looks really thin on this and about eight to 10 mil low is about where we want it because I've got the, the dots halfway up the face here. So eight to 10 mil low is about where we want to hit it. So when it's kind of 12 to 15 low, that's pretty thin. Eight to 10 mil, that's pretty good. That one felt good. Slightly less toey, possibly. I mean, that's just four ridiculously consistent shots, isn't it? Yep, eight mil low, better. Slightly less toey, yep, good. Again, face consistently reading closed, misread. Probably a misread on club speed there as well, I'd argue. We're getting some funny data, so I might have to see what I can do about this. But again, there's four shots. I mean, that's only, that was shot four. They're literally on top of each other. Consistency, yeah. Well, that looks extremely different, but we will touch on that later. So yeah, jumping into the MB. First few done with a CB, obviously I'm gonna do a few with each. So a few with CB now, a few of MB, then a few of Pro, then go back and go CB, MB, Pro, CB, MB, Pro. 
rotate through and I'll probably again, I'll get 60 odd shots. I'm only going to show you a few, of course, because we don't want it to be 14 hours long. But yeah, very interested to hit this. Okay, felt a bit better. Still was a tiny bit thin, if I'm honest. So again, for that performance out of a thin, yeah, I mean, instantly the strike has changed straight away. It was very toey with the CB, moved way more central straight away with the MB, probably an internal mass and weighting thing there more than anything else. But yeah, for an MB for a thin, 183 carry, can't complain. So now jumping into the MB, the blade. So yeah, again, traditional muscle back design, not really any help whatsoever. Face and body, one piece forged construction, a proprietary forging process as Callaway say from the same 1025 carbon steel we see in the CB. Again, to give you that nice buttery soft feel, as they say, gonna be subjective, but it is it's soft feeling. Um, and yeah, not really any tech at all, to be honest, just one piece forged construction, no min waiting out in the toe like in the CB. So realistically, we've got that one piece forged construction. We've got, again, the dynamic sole design to help with turf interaction. And we've got the flighted CG, again, the same as we've got in the CBs. But apart from that, that is just an MB blade. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how forgiving this actually is. I actually felt like a semi-decent strike. I still wouldn't say it was flushed. But it got there. Still probably a tiny bit low. Definitely getting yeah, a little bit low, not terrible 13 mil, but definitely a fraction low. Still 130 odd ball speed, 134 efficiency, super efficient out the bottom. Again, for a blade, it's doing really well. That actually felt like a decent strike. Yeah, go on. Use that slope. Yeah, 130 ball speed, I mean, that's, Yep, pretty good, that one. That felt pretty good. Yeah, it's nice, that one, really nice. Tiny bit toey, but felt good. That felt like a decent swing. Yep, definitely take that. Yeah, great strike. Exactly where we want to hit it. Nine mil low, right in the middle. Perfect strike. So now jumping into the pro model. So the, the bit more tech packed model of this range. Still kind of, they're calling it your tour distance iron. So hollow body construction. We know that about this. But I wouldn't class it as your player's distance iron because that's down more in a 30 degree loft range, whereas this is up at the 33. So still traditional ish loft, but that hollow body design to give you that little bit more help, that little bit more pop as well. So a bit more tech packed in this. Obviously, the hollow body, we've got that. It's got progressive face design, which is very interesting. Now, Callaway is saying, you know, the longer irons, it's a different face design. We've got 455 cup face in the longer irons, which they're saying is gonna give you a bit more ball speed and a little bit more launch, which would be great in longer irons. But then as we come into the shorter irons, we've got the 1025 forged face, which they're saying is a bit more consistent for a bit more spin and a bit more control, which again, can't really test that, but if it does that, fantastic. Um, we've still got the dynamic sole design as well, so the leading edge, uh, relief and the trail edge for that better turf interaction. They're saying that's consistent throughout the models, which is a really nice touch. And I might get this bit wrong. I've got it on the screen, so I've messed it up a few times. Urethane microspheres, as they're calling it, which realistically, it's almost probably a little bit speed foamy, right, from TaylorMade. It's that kind of to dampen that sound and feel, try and give it that little bit more of a forged feel, forged iron feel, even though it's hollow body, because that's what we all want, right? We want that ultimate forged iron feel with that bit more help, that bit more pop, that bit more forgiveness and a bit more tech to help us out. So they're saying it's exactly what this iron does. Let's see. Again, the strike felt good. Really good. Yep. 
Yeah, it's just interesting. Like straight off the bat, it's easier for me to find strike with this head than it is the MB. Now, a lot of the time I like to put it down to swing because I think if you make a good swing, you'll hit a good shot. I mean, that sounds quite obvious when you say that. However, I think there's definitely some things going on within some of the internal weighting of the head and, and where that's positioned and how that's gelling with me and my swing. And I find it in fittings quite often that certain heads gel better with different people for reasons I can even probably pinpoint. They just do, they can find strike, they can hit it more consistently and it seems straight away with this, for me, I can find center easier. Ooh. That was a bit out of the heel, but... Oh. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it wasn't badly heady to be fair on that one. It, it felt a little bit, but... Again, <laughs> love that shot. That was pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, nice strike. So performance numbers, that's over two hours probably span that hit in over 140 shots. So this is a very good data set. <laughs> Ball speed, we can see CB actually pipped it. Surprising, I know, in all fairness, when I hit him all out the middle, there wasn't really anything in it in ball speed, to be honest. Probably 133 from the Pro, 133 from the CB, probably one, maybe 131, 132 from the MB, so maybe a slightly little bit less from the MB. But in this test, on average, over a hell of a lot of shots, CB pipped it, and I was very surprised about CB. If I had to pick one of these heads, CB, like really impressive. So 130, 128 and a half from the Pro down to 128 in the MB, even that was surprising. Not that much difference between them, if I'm honest. Launch, we see the same from the CB and MB, as we'd probably expect in all fairness, regardless of Callaway's marketing with the blade being slightly lower launch. They're the same lofter, they're not going to be massively different in all honesty. A little bit lower in the Pro, which we'd expect to see different head design, hollow body, uh, and a little bit stronger in lofting. We expect to see a little bit lower launch, and we're going to expect to see a little bit lower spin, and we did by about 300-ish revs, which again, I hit shed loads of shots just to really see what is the difference, and I would say that is a very, very fair comparison, about 300 revs between them, but the CB and MB, pretty much exactly the same in launch and in spin. There's really not much in those heads. Um, but I will say that the MB was really odd. Even when you hit a good one, it was like, felt great, didn't quite get that much out of it. Then you hit a bad one, or it felt bad, and you got exactly the same as you just got from a good one. It's like you don't get enough out of the good ones, but you get too much out of the bad ones for an MB. Really strange, really odd. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing, but there you go. But yeah, not much in the CB and MB at all. Um, and carry realistically, I mean, it's a few yards in it. I mean, I'm playing all of those at 185 on course. There's not loads there, realistically. Front to back dispersion, MB tightest, just about, then CB and then Pro, which again, we'd expect. Maybe the Pro, when you absolutely nail it, maybe it spin drops a little bit lower because of the head design. Goes that little smidge further, and then you're going to get a similar drop off. You hit a bad one. Well, a bad one could go two yards, really, if it's really bad. But you get my point. A little bit tight front to back dispersion with the MB, but that CB, like, it's just the best of best of both worlds, really. I mean, even peak when you see it was a little bit high with the CB. That's just going to be obviously the most ball speed coupled with the most launch. Got a little bit higher peak, but yeah, I mean, really, all very impressive heads. But CB standing out. Okay, so let's touch on the forgiveness then. I'll show you maybe just one bad one with each so this video doesn't get stupidly long. And then let's just discuss, or I'll discuss what I found during this test about the forgiveness of these heads. That was by far the worst shot of the day. That was absolutely horrible. I can't hit this MB at all, but I mean, that 18 mil low, it's even lower. I feel like I nearly missed that. 178, two yards offline. Blades are definitely much better than they ever been. Wow, that's so bad. Oh my, oh my, it's just, these are the ones that I'm supposed to be hitting well. I, I cannot do it. So low heel. But again, I mean, I'm absolutely astounded, impressed. You see the strike where that was there. Horrific for an MB. Incredible. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that was very, very bad. Like, felt borderline shank. Just, yeah, super low, thin in the heel. Bad swing, bad swing. But yeah, good result. Funny enough, very similar carry to what we've seen with the blades when I hit that really low one. And 177 carry, that's 176 carry that one, sorry. Is there gonna be much more of a drop off with the blade than this? Hmm. Oh. That was just horrible. Low, toey, felt not nice. All vibrations up the shaft. Yep, super low toe. Again, well, 176, very similar to the other rubbish one I hit. So the drop off, yes, reasonable, but to be honest, I think the front to back drop off with all of these clubs, a uh, pro NBCB, I think it's probably gonna be pretty much the same. Oh. Hmm, didn't feel great. <laughs> oh man, this CB is actually super impressive. Again, don't necessarily think it was quite that toey, but it definitely didn't feel good. Genuinely, this, this CB, if anything, is the one that's standing out to me, in my opinion. Looks the best, feels the best. Yeah, and putting this up against the T100, that's a video I have to do, probably next because that's one I'm really intrigued for. Okay, so the forgiveness then, the MB, the blade, that was an interesting one, we should say. And what I mean by that is when I felt like I hit a pretty good one, felt nice, didn't get as much out of it as I would have expected to. The efficiency was a little low and the ball speed was a little low. But then you'd hit one that didn't feel quite as good and it would be the same numbers, the same efficiency and go as far. So from that respect, actually quite good to be honest, but I didn't really always feel like I was getting as much as I should out of it. And obviously, yeah, when you do miss hit it badly, you do get a reasonable drop off to be fair. But for a blade, actually pretty impressive. The CB for me, really good, really impressive. I put that head to head against the T100. That's probably a video that will be coming. The good hits felt good, great. Numbers were good, felt I was getting what I should out of it. Miss hits for a, for a you know, head of this profile and this design really impressive, wasn't seeing a huge drop off in all honesty. Again, for the head design, very impressed with that head. And then the Pro, I'd say pretty similar with the, uh, the CB, to be honest. I felt, was the forgiveness any better than the CB? I don't think so. Maybe very, very marginally. On the good ones, it was obviously great. Bad ones, it still did pretty well. Any, yeah, but for the hollow head design, out of the three, did it really stand out in terms of more forgiving for me? No, I don't think it did really. Pro in my left hand, least workable. Going to MB in my right hand, most workable. See the CB in the middle. So, MB, most workable. Should be really easy to hit a draw, right? Let's give it a go. Shot number one. Can we hit a draw with the MB? Yes, we absolutely can. A really good draw, that actually. Perfect draw. It's a really good shot. <laughs> yes, so I mean, where does this come from? Yeah, nice. Again, path away from the inside, face closed relative to the path, we get a draw. So that's obviously a big part of it. If you can't manipulate your path, you're gonna struggle to shot shape anyway. However, so where does this, where does this come from, this, this kind of workability story, we call it? So traditionally, a blade, just a bit of metal, right? Back in the day, it was just a forged bit of metal. It is now, but we've still got a, a bit, bit more design to it, should we say. But back in the day, you got a big hosel, big chunk of metal, then just a, a bit of metal here. So we're not manipulating any mass. We're not maneuvering any mass. So the, the, the hosel would always drag the CG, the center of gravity, center of mass, more into the heel. So therefore, the toe would almost be lighter. So it'd almost be a bit easier to work, a bit easier to get it closing, and for the better player, a little bit easier to hold it off. Whereas if we go into your kind of game improvement irons or something with a bit more tech in it, where we're now really starting to see the hollow bodies with the tungsten weights and the mass dragged low and back and all this kind of thing, we're shifting the CG about more central, sometimes even more toe side. So we've got the more mass down low and out the back and out into the toe potentially. Again, it's actually possibly gonna be a little bit harder to, to get that closing over 
or sometimes we might even find it could be a bit more vapor, a bit more weight in the toe, right? But that bit more weight in the toe being a bit less controllable. So that's the story behind it. That's where it sort of comes from. Hmm. I still obviously think it's a lot more skill based, if I'm completely honest, rather than the club doing it. So here, lovely draw. Can we hit a lovely fade? It is fading. I just started it too far left. Yeah, that's always what I do with a fade, though, in all honesty. That's definitely more me than the club. So here we've got the path. I mean, yeah, I'm not having it. The face was 4 3 close. If it was, it would not have come back. I did have 198 right spins on it, so it did fade a little bit, a little bit. See if we can do another fade. There we go. Very nice. A functional fade. We like that. Again, so we know that path's going to be moving left, face open relative to the path, close relative to the path according to quad. It, it definitely wasn't. Quads just definitely playing up. Um, so then the pro, obviously a little bit more tech. We know that. We've got some more internal mass, internal weighting. Less workable, apparently. So let's see if I struggle to shot shape this one. Can we hit a draw? We absolutely can. It's a tiny bit toey that. Again, great shot. You can see I generally am more of a drawer of the ball because my draws are way better than my fades are. But again, no trouble at all really, kind of dropping the path inside, getting the ball to draw back to target. Now this, this might be a tricky one. Let's try another functional fade. Mm, it is a fade. I didn't quite catch it in all fairness. It was a little bit out of the heel. I don't love fading the ball, I never have. However, it started left and it came back to the right. The path was left and the face was open. If anything, too open. Maybe too workable club, right? Let's give that another go with the fade. There we go, a bit better. Tiny bit skinny, I would say, on that one. However, again, path moving left, face open relative to the path. Yeah, a little bit skinny, but again, good fade delivery there. Path moving left, face open relative to the path. Is this really going to be that much less workable than the blade? No, in my opinion, it won't be. Right, so let's touch quickly on looks. I mean, looking straight at, from the back of the clubs, I feel like these are gonna be quite marmite. Some people will love them, some people will hate them. Let me know what you think. One thing I will say is they've been made to blend, they've been made to combo, so similar look throughout, which they've obviously done very well. Where the Apex logo is, that weight there, that's for swing weighting purposes, which is a great, a great attribute, a great kind of thing for us to be able to do and mess around with in fittings. It's very hard with irons, easy with drivers, with adjustable weights. Not many irons have that, so it's a really, really good addition from Callaway, that. Um, but yeah, looks, don't know, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think in the comments. So let's jump down by the ball then. Now this is where it kind of does get quite interesting if I'm honest. So we're gonna go MB left, CB middle, and then pro on the right. So the MB, very top, small top line, as we'd imagine from an MB, it's kind of like someone stood on the CB. And it's really interesting. It's very squat from top to bottom. You'll just say like someone stood on it. Little bit of a longer blade length, I would say marginally, just looks like it stands out that little bit further than the CB. So a little bit of a longer blade length and way smaller top to bottom. And even though it's the same loft, looks like it's got a shed load more loft on it. Interesting. CB for me, my favorite looking one in this lineup, looks like a very traditional cavity back iron. Slim top line, not a lot of offset going on. Just looks exactly how I would want a player's iron to look. And then moving into the pro, Bit more of a rounded toe. Instantly you see that chunkier top line. Obviously it's going to be with the hollow body design. It needs to, to be a bit of a, a bigger top line to, to enable them to have that hollow body. So yeah, bit of a stubbier top line, bit of a more rounded toe. Yeah, it still looks nice, but definitely a noticeable, noticeably bigger top line than the other two. CB for me really stands out there in the way it looks down behind the ball. That would be my pick of those three.
And even from the sole, it kind of gets progressively bigger from the MB and CB. To be honest, MB and CB, I can't really see a lot in it, if I'm honest. They look pretty much the same. The dynamic sole is more noticeable on the CB. You can really see that pre-worn leading edge, which is really, really cool. You can barely even really see it on the MB at all. Again, moving into the Pro, bit of a bigger uh, sole width, but again, really notice that dynamic sole design, the pre-worn leading edge looks really nice. Yeah, again, a little bit bigger Pro, but not too big at all. But yeah, quite comfortably, summing up the looks category for me, the CB easily wins it. Just overall kind of look, head profile, size, design, everything. Um, yeah, CB takes it. Right, sound and feel. So we're starting off with the MB. At the end of this section, I'll overlay some sound clips of MBCB Pro, MBCB Pro back to back so you can hear the difference in them. If you can hear it on the microphone, I'm going to give you my feedback now. Cool. So starting off with the MB, so fully forged, 1025 carbon steel. Callaway saying this is going to be one of the softest feeling irons that they've ever made. So yeah, sit one and see what we think of the feel. Obviously, it's going to be very strike dependent, so it depends if I can actually hit it well. And I actually hit that very well. And yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't say that it's buttery soft. There's still a little bit of firmness to it and not quite super dull and muted, it's still like a, it's not a crack, I wouldn't say it's a crack, there's a little bit of, of sound to it. Yeah, it felt, felt good, felt really nice, but I wouldn't necessarily describe that as buttery soft. Yeah, again, it feels good, it's a great shot. It does feel nice, absolutely. I wouldn't say that it's buttery soft but definitely nowhere near as firm as you know, P790s and the hollow body designs, but it feels good. CB, again, very similar construction, the CB to the MB, so again, I wouldn't expect it to be hugely different. And it's not. I struck it okay, a little bit high leaky, right, that one, but sounded and felt, <laughs> to me, I, I just could not tell there'd be any difference between those two whatsoever if I'm completely honest. That one spun up a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's... Personally, I can't. I can't feel or hear a difference between those two. Wouldn't necessarily expect to, maybe. Now this one, going into the Pro, biggest difference in head design. This is probably where a lot of you are going to be wondering, is there a difference in sound and feel going into that hollow body design. So let's see what we think. Yeah, definitely louder. Again, it was a good shot. Keep hitting it straight in that hole. I destroy screens very quickly. As you can see, it's a great shot. Definitely louder. <laughs> let's grab another ball. Definitely, definitely louder. And, but I'll tell you what, it didn't actually feel any firmer, I wouldn't say. Yeah, good shot that. Noticeably louder, I would say. Turn that a fraction, stay right. Yeah. Does it feel, hmm, maybe a tiny, tiny bit firmer, but honestly, it feels reasonably similar. Again, with this, you've probably got the 1025 forged face with the Eurostain micro spheres. So they're trying to get it to feel like that. It doesn't feel exactly like that, but it's not a million miles away. Just a little bit louder in pitch is all I would say. Now we'll overlay those quickly for you. So let's go. Pro, CB, MB, Pro, CB, MB. Again, let me know in the comments, what do you think about the look, sound, and feel of these irons? So there we go. If you're still watching now, thank you so much, because I can almost guarantee this video is quite long with me touching on three different clubs and going through each different category in detail. So I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please comment below and let me know what you thought. Let me know what you think of these clubs. Are you gonna be going out and testing them? Do you like the look of them? Do you hate the look of them? What did you think of the numbers and the results and my thoughts on the forgiveness and those kind of things? I'd love to hear your comments below. Stay tuned as always. We've got loads more coming. We're gonna be putting these up against all other kind of heads as well. Definitely new tightless range, tailor-made, etc., etc. Loads more coming. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.